sit, sit. This is Willow, Willow, but well, that was Willow's nose. And this is Willow's roadmap to success. Willow's tired. We've been outside for about three hours now and it is uh, July in Nebraska, so it's a little bit warm. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah, this is her roadmap to success. I'm gonna try to summarize all the things we went over. So basically, we start off by talking about exercise. Now, Willow's taking our loose leash walking class and the guardian is a little frustrated she, because she still lunges and pulls so much on the walk. Most people don't ever think about it. You can actually exercise your dog before a walk and it'll produce a much more enjoyable walk. And so uh, we went over to start off by talking about creative forms of exercise. Doggy Stairmaster, um, uh, scent games, leaving the treats around at Google scent games, um, feeding out of a snuffle mat, which you can order on Amazon, get an Omega Paw treat ball and a couple other treat dispensing toys or puzzles. So mental stimulation is just as important as physical stimulation. Um, potentially getting her a doggy backpack, which is a harness that has pockets that you can load up with bottles of water, uh, bags of sand and things like that. Um, as well as, uh, uh, so, and then fetch is not a really a, a big thing for her. But the idea is to come up with a number of things that we can do where we can exercise the dog uh, and get that energy out. Now, uh, a lot of us, when, we, uh, when our dogs are misbehaving, we interpret that as dogs being mischievous, it's being naughty. We take this thing personally. It's not personal. The dog, if it's barking or doing these things, is probably just saying, I have too much energy right now. Would you like to burn my energy or would you like me to handle it myself? Oh, you're not gonna do anything? Okay, I'm gonna run around and bark at the neighbor dogs. Or I'm gonna dig holes, or I'm gonna tear down the blinds, or knock the kids over, or whatever it is. So uh, basically what we wanna do is we want the dog to develop, uh, or the humans to be able to have some creative ways they can deplete that energy. So with this forms of exercise, you can. Remember, exercise is best done every two to four hours. She needs to sleep probably about 14 to 16 hours a day. When she's asleep, she's recharging her batteries. So about every two to four hours, she's gonna need exercise. You might wanna keep that exercise journal, write down the date at the top, the time and how many up downs in the stairs, then the time and, that you fed him and if you use a snuffle mat, um, the time and, and scent games and all this stuff. And also she barked the neighbor at 315. She charged the door or she did this, she did that. And at the end of the day, give her an overall letter grade, A through F. It's anything other than an A the next day, instead of doing 20 up downs in the stairs in the morning, maybe we do 30. So the idea is to play around with the elements and remember that you can also exercise her to set her up for success. Try fetching or try doing 10 up downs on the stairs and take her for a walk after 10 minutes of rest. And remember, all with an empty stomach for the exercise. 90 minutes of ex uh, eat after eating before you should exercise the dog. Um, and then if she doesn't do great on the walk, then maybe next time uh, do 15 up downs on the stairs or 20. Keep on playing around those uh, variables until eventually you get to the right amount where the dog, you're like, oh my God, that was like the best walk we ever had. So if I get her 28 up downs on the stairs, rest 10 minutes and go for a walk, she's gonna perform better. Now, something, uh, I don't like the angle, so I'm gonna get down here a little bit lower. Um, so something else to think about is uh, when we're walking our dogs, sometimes when they get overly tired, they don't perform as well as we would like them to do. And just like us, if I'm overly tired, I'm not gonna perform at my best. So we might not wanna take them as long, and go for as long of a walk. Maybe we uh, do the exercise of the stairs, we do 10 minutes. It's always better to have a shorter activity that is successful than try to push the uh, activity longer and then have a failure at the end. And the most important thing when it comes to dogs when you're trying to do behavior modification is the last thing that they think of, the last memory, is the best or is a positive one. So the dog gets in a dog fight and then you separate them and they separate. Well, the last memory after that dog fight, a dog is fighting that dog. So after a dog fight, you have to obviously make sure they're separated and they're comfortable. But then what you wanna do is get those dogs back together, go for a walk together. They don't have to interact, but the last memory they have is of a positive activity. So next thing I remember, next time I see that dog, that's what I remember, not the negative. Um, all right, now I forgot to go over something uh, in the session, so I'm gonna go over it here right now. So um, uh, one of the things the dog does is it rushes through the door or up and down the stairs, and there are little ones in the house occasionally, and, he's, and she's knocking them down. So what I would do is I would teach her to stay at the top of the stairs. And the way I would do that is this, I would tell her to stay, or tell her to sit at the top of the stairs, and you can give her the stop sign, and I would, this is really more of a wait than a stay, unless she has a stay command. So let's say you just say wait. So say, put her to sit at the top of the stairs, say wait, take one step, and if she gets up, in the process of you taking that one step, stop. So I'm gonna try to take one step is what I guess I should have said. So if I take it, I make it all the way to the step and she stays there, then I would come back and give her a treat. Then I would take that and repeat that one step, she stays there, take a step back, go give her a treat. Do that about three or four times. The next time I do it, I do step with my right foot and a step with my left foot on the step, then back up and give her the treat and say wait. And then I would make eventually do the second step. 
and then come back and wait. Now say I take, I start going this way and she gets up, then I pull back and I stop and I say sit. And then I lift my leg and start going up, she gets up, I put it back down and say sit. So what, you were, what we wanna do is we wanna break the activity down into the easiest version possible. So there shouldn't be kids running around. We, the dog, we've exercised the dog to set up for success. The other dog, neighbor dog's not barking. And so everything is the easiest version possible. Then what we do is we make it into individual steps or slices. And we help the dog practice slice number one over and over and over again until they're consistently doing it the way we want. Only then do we go to step two. So at first you're gonna lean towards, uh, take a half step towards the step and then come back if she, sit, uh, if she gets up, tell her to sit again. Reach again, she gets up, stop, sit. Reach a third time, she gets up, stop, sit. Now the fourth time I would reach and she gets up, I would pull back and, and I would just look at her. I wouldn't say sit. If she sits, then I would continue again. If she doesn't sit, then I would abort the activity, go and sit back down. So pick and choose your battles. Don't do this at times where you have to do it because then you're putting an artificial deadline and, and you're adding pressure to you and the dog. So it's commercial, put the t uh, TV on pause, practice this. You might have to start and stop several times, but eventually you'll be able to take that full step. She stays put, you come back and give her the treat. Do that a couple, and once you have a success, practice success three to five to seven times, then go to two steps on that, uh, two feet on that step, and repeat that one about three to five times. Then you go to the third, second step with one foot and then with both foot. Eventually you're walking two steps down the stairs, three steps, 10 steps, all the way to the landing, down the other set of stairs, and you keep on coming back up and giving the treat and saying, wait. Once you get to the bottom, all the way to the bottom of the stairs, and come up with a special word that means to come down the stairs. And so maybe you say, liberty. And so, uh, so and, and if that's the word you want to use, she's not going to know what liberty means. The way you teach it is once you get to the, to the bottom of the stairs, you say, Willow. Willow runs down the stairs. You give her the treat and say, liberty. So liberty now means wait at the top of the stairs, and when the humans get to the bottom of the stairs, then they say, liberty, I run down the stairs and I get a treat. Now, when you're doing this, I would have the humans practice just the human first. Then, and with both humans, both the adults, I should say. Then eventually we do it with one of the adults with one of the little ones who's with the adult. And then eventually we wanna do it where the adult is there, says, wait, we have the little one go down the stairs, then the adult goes down the stairs, then the adult calls the, the dog. So now the dog is practicing waiting. Right now, dogs want to be first. They want to be the first because they want to get that treat and that reward, and they're excited and they're ready to go. Well, we're teaching them that if you wait and are patient, there's a reward there too. Actually, it's a better reward. And now you can say, wait, you go down the stairs, you don't have to worry about her tackling you and knocking you down the stairs. Um, you can do a version of this. Another thing you do, a version of this is on the stairs, you can search for uh, wait at door on my website or message us. I'm happy to share that video with you as well. All these, all these concepts I'm talking about, you can go to doggoneproblems.com, click on where it says dog training tips. There's a search box on the right side of the page. Just type in whatever it is and it'll, there'll be a whole bunch of videos that I've worked with other clients that will show you how to do it. If you can't find them, like I said, message me. So those are examples of uh, exercise and look for other things you can do. Um, but the more that you have the dog work, um, the more exercise you get to set the dog up for success, you're gonna find the, uh, your work is gonna be more productive and you're gonna find yourself less frustrated, the dog less frustrated and enjoying the activities more and you make quicker progress. All right, uh, we also talked about uh, the importance of rules. Now a couple of housekeeping things without going into all the stories that I told you. Remember for dogs, any attention is validating. So correcting a dog and rewarding a dog by saying good dog are pretty much the same thing. So yelling at a dog for doing the wrong thing is validating and rewarding. Good attention, bad attention, same thing. Anything your dog is doing when you pet is what you're rewarding, including unbalanced states of mind. So if she's excited and you pet her, you're gonna make her more excited. Fearful, more fearful, barky, more barky, and so on. This also works for bad, good behaviors as well. And I'll talk about that through petting with a purpose here in a minute. Okay, so um, also when it comes to dogs, anything they do in your presence that you don't disagree with is looked at as have your seal of approval. So if, if you remember when we were doing the session, she was barking and running up the fence, but nobody corrected her. And as soon as I get up and went over and, and blocked her, she wouldn't even come to that side of the house because I burned the energy to go over there. Now I came in here with kind of a clean slate, like I mentioned earlier, you guys have a little bit of baggage, you've been letting her get away with things. So you might have to do that a little bit more than I did. But you have to let her know, I'm willing to come over there and get the energy uh, and burn the energy to make sure to follow through and get what I want accomplished. Once you do that enough times in a row, she knows you ain't playing and that you're going to get your way. She'll start giving you what you want later, more and more. But we have to meet her needs as well. It's a contract. We want her to listen to us, but we have to take care of her. And that exercise is a huge component. So remember, if she's, if she's naughty or misbehaving, I don't want you to think about that as her being naughty or misbehaving. I want you to identify that as she is saying, I need some exercise. Would you like to exercise me, David, or would you like me to bark and run around the house? No, I'd rather exercise you myself. Um, 
for the barking, uh, before we get into the rules, I guess, um, uh, for the barking, remember you can use that Roman blind. So go to Kinko's, measure your window, uh, get Kinko's and get the wide one, single piece of paper, put it on the inside of your door jam so she can't scratch it, scratch, scratch it off inside of the window jam, I should say. And then basically, so have her go to the window and she can, she can see up this high. So the, t the paper should maybe go up this high if this is the window on the monitor. So she goes to the window and she barks at things. She can't see that they leave. So she doesn't think that her, right now she does see them leave. So she thinks her bark makes them leave. It validates her behavior. Well, if you block that for a couple months and we do the other things we're talking about in the session, she gets out of a habit of going to the door, uh, windows and barking at uh, the passersby. And uh, the less she does that, combined with the other stuff we're going, the less that she's gonna do that behavior. Um, okay, so, um, and also for the fence behind me, remember you can get that, uh, that go to Lowe's and Home Depot, it's, the, it's, it's black or green and it's squared, it's instead of being diamond orientation, and overlay it so your fence is like four feet, have the, have the overlay, maybe two feet of overlay, and then at two feet it's a four foot section. So now your four foot fence is essentially six foot, um, and, uh, and it doesn't even need to be six foot, I maybe make it five foot, so maybe have it overlay most of it, but the idea is to have it a little bit taller because we're on a terrace and so we can look down. And so we want maybe a six foot fence, well, actually that would be good. And then go to, uh, well, I don't know if you can go to home uh, to uh, Pier 1 anymore, but there's a lot of places I'm sure that make bamboo reed matting. It's a roll, you put it down there along the fence line, I'd probably put it on the other side of the fence so that she can't scratch it off, but that's gonna block some of her visual. So then she can't see those other dogs when she's just lounging here, not being able to see it. I know she responds right now to the sounds of them as well, but the visual is definitely gonna be a trigger. So we wanna take away at least that one trigger. Um, and that's what we just call that maintenance, to putting the dog in a position to succeed by blocking their access to things that are gonna get them into trouble. Um, all right, so we talked about rules. The rules we talked about, not being allowed in the furniture. Remember, order those X mats from Amazon and put one on each cushion. And you have to have them there for about two months, three months, and then you can gradually, instead of having three on the couch, maybe we have two with the other two kind of positioned in the middle, and then gradually they disappear. Um, just kind of like the window, uh, the paper of the window, after like two months, then we take an exacto knife and we cut the top inch off. So gradually that paper comes down on the window as the dog has gotten out of the habit for running to the window because she can't see outside and whether or not her bark works. So, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, let me see, what, what was I just talking about? I lost my train of thought, it'll come back to me. Um, all right, so uh, for, uh, uh, for, the fur well, oh, for the furniture. So gradually you move those X mats away, but she gets out of the habit of going there. Now the video, remember I talked to you about, if she, uh, to get her to go to the dog bed, just uh, search for dog bed on my website, and there's videos that teach your dog how to go to the dog bed on command. Now one last little uh, thing dog psychology wise, every new command that you come up with her, for her, I would like you to come up with a funny word a word that's gonna make people laugh or chuckle. Uh, she is an intimidating looking dog, although she's not an aggressive dog in any way, shape, or form. I can see her being territorial, but um, you know, she's a sweetheart. Um, and I think she's just insecure a little bit, and I think she's confused in her role. Her role. I think she thinks her role is to protect the family members because they don't act like leaders, but they don't listen to her. So she acts really aggressive to things outside the fence to try to prevent them from getting close enough for guardians to recognize that they could take advantage of her in the dog's mind. And so the more the guardians enforce rules, the more the less she's gonna feel that that's her job. So um, some of the rules, uh, like I said, not being allowed on the furniture, uh, train her to go to the dog bed and reinforce that. Um, having to sit at the door, go to the door, tell her to sit one time. If she doesn't sit within three seconds of the only time that you say it, you sit down and wait for one minute. After one minute, go back to the door, command her to sit. One, two, three, she doesn't sit by three, walk away and sit down again. I'm only saying it once. If you don't do what I want, you don't get the reward. Remember, this is a pre mac uh, a less desirable behavior earns you a more desirable behavior. You want to go in the backyard, you have to sit at the door. As soon as you sit, boy, that door flies open like grease lighting. But if you don't sit, then I walk away and sit down. First time I walk away for one minute, then two minutes, then four minutes, then eight minutes. I keep double length of time until eventually the dog just goes and sits at the door this way saying, please, can I go outside? Uh, when it does, go let the dog out. I would do that for each door in your house. Um, go uh, in and out of the car, getting out of that kennel. So I'm only gonna say it once, and then when you do what I want, you get a reward. If you don't do, if you don't do it, that's fine. Now this isn't something to do with fearful dogs or dogs that have psychological issues, but in her case, it's gonna help her see and respect her guardians more. The more she sees them acting like a leader, the less she needs to do it, the less stress she's gonna have, the less barking you're gonna have, and a lot of other things. Okay, um, let me see, what else? Um, other rules, um, not be allowed the kitchen when you're cooking, not allowed around the kids when they're eating or any humans around when they're eating. So you can also remember search for kitchen or invisible line on my website, but it's that technique that I showed you with the, uh, with the uh, rope on the ground. And so if you forget how to do that, let me know. 
Now we use those escalating consequences for that. That's the one thing I don't go over in this video because I don't want people to use those out of context. And so if you forget what those are, please message me. I'm happy to go over them with you. Now the It's Your Choice is a game that you can play. That's the one where you have a bunch of treats in your hand and the dog is here. You wait for the dog to back away, or you, you open your hand when the dog backs away, when it goes for it, you close your hand. When it backs away, you open your hand, and keep on doing this back and forth until you open your hand, the dog stays here. Then with my other hand, I take a treat and I give it to the dog. Don't take it out of the hand, you give it. You're saying, look, you can have things, you just can't try to take them. So um, it's called It's Y-E-R, and then choice, and you can search for that on YouTube. I don't have a video for that on my website yet, but uh, Susan Garrett, I believe, is the one who in, uh, came up with that, and she spells it with Y-E-R. But uh, she's got probably a bunch of videos that show, and she's, Susan Garrett is awesome, so you should definitely watch any videos that she has. Um, all right, so um, we also went over the leave it exercise with you, and that is a video, we have several of those on uh, dogonproblems.com. So if you forget how to do any of those things, let us know, but these are impulse control exercises. And so the more the dog has to wait for something, for permission to do something, the better impulse control they have in other situations like not barking at dogs on the other side of the fence, not lunging at things on the street. So uh, the other rule that we talked about was uh, feeding her, well, first of all, feeding her out of the uh, treat dispensing toys, but um, she, you put the food down, she's not allowed to eat. You eat something or five more bites, then you give her permission to eat. So now every meal, she has to practice waiting for permission to eat and listening for you as an authority figure. That's a wonderful development of impulse control. Remember, our method is really designed to look at your lifestyle and show you little tricks and exercises to add little twists to things that you do all the time anyways. Once you adopt the twist, you gotta think about it, but every time you feed your dog or pet your dog or talk to your dog or walk your dog, it, these little things add up to become big things. We also talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is uh, petting the dog for a reason. That means that you would like to pet the dog or the dog would like you to pet it. So if she comes up and nudges you, barks at you, paws at you, you give her a counter order, tell her to sit. If she sits in that three second window, you pet her on her chin, say sit, and pet her as much or as little as you want. If she doesn't sit in that three second window, remember playing hard to get works great for dog training. Show her you have other things to do. Wait for her to disengage before she gets another opportunity to do it. Uh, so uh, if she nudges me, nothing happens now other than I give her a counter order, tell her to sit or lay down. And if she does what I want, she gets a reward. If she does anything else, nothing happens. After a while, she'll start coming in front of you, sitting down to prepay for that attention. When she does, make sure you pet that, because that's a desirable behavior. Remember to use the watchword a paycheck. A paycheck means I suspect you forgot to pet with the purpose. It's not busted or gotcha, even if I did it right. So if it comes in, I see I'm petting well, and she's standing, they say paycheck, I stop petting. Tell her to sit. If she sits, I pet her on her chin, say sit, and actually, actually I asked her to sit. When you flush the toilet, she sit up, but I continue petting her, but thanks, because I do forget to pet without a purpose. So it's not gotcha, it's a gentle reminder. Also, we really want the dog to know what it can do that we like. And we're gonna let it know that by giving it our attention. We call this celebrating. So every time the dog comes to you, when you didn't call it, pet it and say, come. Every time it sits, pet it and say, sit. Every time it lays down, pet it and say, crash or chill or whatever your word is. When she takes her first bite of food for three months, call it meatball, lasagna, sushi, whatever you wanna say. Uh, when she drinks water, come up with the name of your favorite cocktail or uh, bar. So every time, or, you know, every time she takes a drink, you call it happy hour. You know, say eventually you say happy hour and the dog runs over and drinks water. Do you need to teach your dog to drink water? Probably not. But what if you're on a hike or you're, you guys do go camping? What if you're passing a stream and you want her to be able to drink water and you're not gonna have access to water? You don't bring a can, uh, can, uh, uh, canteen. Well, you can say, every time you say happy hour when she's drinking water, she does the action first or marrying it or marking it with the command word. Which is to say happy hour, she goes and drinks water. And we can do this for anything you want. So every time she, uh, you know, I say crash means lay down. Flop means lay down your side, and pancake means lay down on your back. And the way I taught my dog to do those things is I waited for my dog to do the behavior on its own, and just within that three second window, I rewarded it and said the name of the command, just the name, not good sit, just sit. Now, um, the video above is, on the, is really a clicker training exercise. So I want you guys to do that one. I'd like each one of you to do that twice a day for the first week. So it shouldn't take you longer than like two minutes, three minutes tops. Remember, follow the instructions there. Don't do it when there's dogs out on, around you. Nobody's doing, uh, there's no, no busyness on the street. We want to practice listening in the easiest capacity for like three to five days. Then you want to start. When you come and you see the lawn people there, grab the leash. Remember, want to get to versus want, have to. Lawn people came, hey, I get to go out and tra teach her to listen to us and not bark at them. Put her on the leash, practice a couple times inside with your clicker, come outside. Eventually, you'll be able to do the boy. You can go out in your front yard and they're doing your neighbor's lawn and they're trimming and you're asking her to come and sit and lay down and she is ignoring them and paying no mind. She's not doing any barking because listening to you is a rewardable thing and, and uh, something she likes to do and that clicker will really dial you in there. Eventually, you can drop the clicker and you just say the command words. 
Now you might want to eventually get yourself like an eight foot or a 10 foot lead. When you do that, make sure that you get one that doesn't burn your hand or wear little gloves. Cause sometimes you, the dog will take off and it'll, I've had that burn, you don't want it. Um, so message me if you can't find those sort of things. Also remember to get your harness and clip your harness to the martingale collar because so, she does have a tendency to get out. Uh, last little thing I want to talk about, and I'll go back to my knees so I have a better orientation, um, is I want you to get in the habit of looking at your dog's body language. So when she's at home and she's relaxed and there's no reason to, for her to be uncomfortable, look at her head, look at her ears, look at her bo overall body. Is she stiff? Where are her legs? Are they under her? Are they behind her? What is her tail? She has a nub, but what is it doing? Is it pointed up? Is it to the side or down? Um, Remember the first sign, usually when a dog is starting to get, uh, get uh, aroused or is not gonna like something, it's gonna be a close her mouth, lower and stare. So at, when you see that, that's when you wanna redirect. Ask her, sit, turn, sit, click, sit, and start walking her away from whatever it is. Now remember to use that passive training for uh, shake-offs. Remember a dog sniffs or shakes it off, that's a way of kind of relieving stress and anxiety. So when she does that, maybe when she shakes it off in home, at, at home, pet her and say chill. So later on, if she, you see her, she's like, chill. So it doesn't necessarily mean that she's gonna go straight to that state of mind, but now she understands the state of mind you want her to go to. So it's really important. Uh, that's why I want you guys to come up with those funny command words for all the new commands that you're doing, because I think she is intimidating some people, and you, I think, have emotional, you're, you're concerned about things. So if you got these goofy, silly names for things, and you say chill, and she shakes it off, or you say, you know, uh, yoga, and she does a stretch, or a play bow or whatever it is. You're just waiting for her to do those things and celebrating through that, what I call it passive training, you're celebrating. Every time I stretch, they pet me and say stretch. Well then if she, is, the other, she can see the other dog, she's staring at the other dog and say stretch, and she goes down and does the play bow. The other dog's like, oh, she's not challenging me. She was actually inviting me to go play. I had that wrong. I did this with one of the first things I taught my puppy Quest is, is to do this, raise his paw. This could mean multiple things to the dog. I mean, if I'm a dog, it means I'm pointing at you. It can mean you can approach me if you're another dog. It also mean please. So, um, but for my dog now, for Quest, so if I want, if I want him to, say, if there's another dog barking at him and I say paw, which is his command, he goes like this, the other dog might stop barking. So we can, remember, we can influence that other dog. Remember when we were doing the exercise, that dog was barking like crazy at first, but when she stopped barking at them, that bark barked less and less and finally just went in on its own, which normally doesn't happen. All right, now, if you have any questions on the stuff we went over, um, let me know. I'd like you to, you're gonna watch this when you get it. Set a reminder to watch this, is a 23 minute video, but set a reminder to watch it again in the middle of August. There's gonna be little tips and things that you're gonna forget, like the treat should go in the mouth first, always, and then you should hear the command word second, or uh, anything you do train your dog, uh, or, or anything your dog's doing, you pet it. Little things like that you're gonna miss. So after you practice after you practice this stuff for a month, you come back and watch that video, you'll clean up and get the other things. My clients who get the best results, come back and watch it a month later. Um, if you have any questions or things stop working, let me know. It's not unusual for things to get better and then the dog to revert. And people are like, it stopped working. It's not stopped working. The dog just remembered how it was and wants to try to go back there. You have to let the dog know those days are behind us. I will outlast you. Remember, one of the very secrets of dogs, you have to always outlast them. Once she realizes that mom has changed and she ain't giving up no matter what, well, why don't I just give mom what she wants and I can try to do what I want to do next. But remember, if it's something you don't want, disagree immediately and try to block access to it. All right, well, this is Willow's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.